C-Max? Well, we did, but there's been some changes afoot. We're down here at Sebring 2012, and we got some new ownership to a familiar airplane. This is the C-Max. We've seen it before. It came out of Florida at that time. Eh, things changed a little bit, and now we have a new owner. Welcome to Richard Rofe and C-Max America. And you are based where, Richard? We're based in Long Island, New York. Long Island, New Just York. Just outside Manhattan. So you got a little water around there, don't Plenty you? Plenty of water. Yeah, lots of water to fly this airplane. Plenty of water. I have flown this. I loved it. It's a great little airplane. And it always was a great little airplane. I know Miguel Rosario. He's a wonderful and talented guy. But you've worked with him now, and you've started making some changes to this airplane. Uh, when it first appeared, that was a few years ago. We didn't have Dynon then. I don't know if they even existed when the uh, C-Max first came to America, but at least uh, now we've got new stuff. Tell me, uh, tell me a couple of the things that have changed on the airplane. Well, the first thing that's changed, the most important thing, is we are um, the only available SLSA flying hull today uh, that's out there, and uh, that's very important. We're basically an FAA-approved aircraft. The other thing that's different is we have a 33 and a half inch wing with a winglet uh, end uh, versus the 28, which is this. We have a full glass panel available. In my particular plane, I have the Dynon Skyview, the Garmin 696. I have cameras. It's a very interesting uh, setup, very beautiful. We have a uh, folding wing option now. It's a foldable wing. It takes seven minutes. Individual can do it without any tools, which is a really nice thing. That's, you can quite, see a, that. that's quite a step, yeah. You can see that on our uh, website. The plane has had a geared down water landing, which is also filmed, and you can see that too on the website. Um, and it's been, uh, we'll call it Americanized, Not, no offense to the Brazilians, but we've increased the seating a little bit. You can now have adjustments. We have a, a little bit more support, lumbar and back and for, forward uh, room for larger uh, people. Although it's always had a wide uh, cockpit, it's 46.9 inches. So. Uh, some of the changes that you talked about there you just mentioned, but one of them that's real important describes the wing. And, and by the way, you said 33 and a half inches. You meant 33 and a half feet. I'm sorry. And that's a, quite an <laughs> expansion from the 28, which I think is, as a seaplane is going to make it interesting. And generally, these are referred to a boat hull airplane is generally referred to as a seaplane. One with floats that are added on in lieu of the gear is generally referred to as a float plane. So this is a seaplane. And, and it, nothing needs to happen to it, and the gear just uh, retracts up, and it's always been some nice hardware, now with some new improvements. You said there's a new treatment at the end of the wing, too, I think. Yeah, the wing, is, the wing as I mentioned, is uh, 33 feet and 7 inches long, and it has a winglet uh, design toward the end, a bit of a curve up, and you get a better glide ratio from the aircraft because of that, and we, have a, we still have a 1,000 foot per minute climb, so it climbs beautifully. Uses the Rotax 912 ULS, tried and true. I love the engine incredibly. And it has amazing landing gear, one of the most uh, impressive features I've found because I fly in the Northeast and a lot of it is off pavement. And I thought the landing gear was not going to be as robust as it is. It's amazing. Uh, the landing gear is smooth and uh, I'm very impressed with it. Very impressed. Excellent. Now, you told me something else that you've added to the airplane, Richard, that I thought was really neat both from a user friendliness idea being able to see and review later what you've done you added a bunch of cameras but you told me about one feature of adding those cameras that falls into the safety arena what's that so the camera is for safety mostly it's basically a very simple camera and of course in a pusher airplane which you have a lot of advantages there are some disadvantages one of the disadvantages is if you did have smoke or anything going on with the engine it's behind you and uh, how do you see it it's next to impossible in fact it is impossible so we put in some micro cameras around the plane so that you could see what's going on behind you, not only to clear the prop, but also in case there's some type of issue. Uh, I didn't even consider the safety on the ground aspect when you're getting ready to fire it up, but also he's right. Most of our SLSA, of course, are tr tractor engine, engine up front. You can see it. If there is any problems with it, you're going to know it real quick. Here, how would you know? And the airplane flies in such a way, it's, I call this a performance seaplane. It is. Uh, most seaplanes are obviously a little bit compromised because they're trying to do extra duty when they add floats to an airplane that wasn't designed with it well it's going to generally give up something maybe speed maybe useful load like that but when you design a hulled airplane around it and make it a seaplane and then when you have a light small uh, aircraft with a powerful engine on it you get quite a different impression than with most other lightweight seaplanes. Don't you? There's no doubt about it and one of the things that I personally was attracted to was the fact that it was a flying hull it was a boat it's designed for boaters and jet skiers and people who understand being real close and in the water versus up on floats. And with floats, you do lose performance, you obviously lose speed, and you do add weight. So this keeps the plane light. Our plane is only 800 pounds 
uh, empty weight, and that's an amazing thing because you have 1430 as your max. It gives you a very nice pay payload. Yes, it does. A useful load and payload. Both right. of them are good. So uh, what kind of range on this airplane? Uh, approximately 550 nautical miles. We have 26.5 gallons of fuel on board, 25 in the wings, and one and a half in a header tank in between the wings that they feed into. Gravity feed. I think it's fun to call nautical miles on a seaplane. It's like finally it works it. as a number. You know, uh, Dave, we've got somebody else here I'd like to introduce into the picture. I see him standing over here. We have the new president of the Seaplane Pilots Association. Come on into the picture, Steve. Of which I'm a proud member, I might add. Right up here. How are you doing? It's saying, oh, thanks, it's Richard. Steve McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, I think I got that right, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, very good. And I, Steve and I just met the other night, but I saw him looking at this and. Uh, what do you think of this little bird? Oh, I love it. You know, I, I love seeing entries like this into the market, and it makes seaplane flying affordable, and it gives us a fresh alternative to what we've experienced in the past. So uh, I welcome it. I Thanks. Think the -Max this is, is some uh, kind of new young blood in the Seaplane Pilots Association, which most of the pilots associations are kind of going through that transition yeah. about now. It's about right. EAA, OPA, go down the list. They've all done it. SPA as well now. Yeah, we all have new executive directors. That's it's right. Just the way it's going. You know what? That's okay, because we've got to have that transition <laughs> yeah. in life. New blood is always good. Dan, but it's interesting Dan, that you're... You could have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to step out of the no, picture. No. <laughs> I'm not saying I have luck, by the way. Though. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> <laughs> However, we are trying to do that. In fact, in my area, Mahasset Bay, where a lot of the seaplane pilots originally flew back in the 30s, including Glenn Curtis and, and others, uh, the, the clipper ship was there. Uh, we're trying to renovate and reorganize the whole seaplane flying there by bringing back the um, old ramp that used to be there. It needs oh, some work. Cool. Yeah, yeah so great. we're really going to work on that. I want to talk to Steve about that, and, yeah. and I plan to. Excellent. Good. Well, I kind of suck Steve in here. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> know we were going to do that. Oh, Thanks for being fine. a good sport. Another guy that knows how to smile yeah. on a camera. There you go. Glad you're doing it again. Yeah, you bet. That's all the good you work. Bet. Thanks. Amen. Thank you. So we talked about the changes that you're making to the airplane, but we are not looking at one of those airplanes. This is the original C-Max, if you will, that first came into the United States. All those changes you told us about, when are we going to see those? We're going to see those very shortly. In fact, the first plane is here in the U.S. It's not here physically in Florida. It's in New York. And now after Sun and Fun, the new planes will be coming in. So it's a couple of months away. We just moved from our modest factory in Rio de Janeiro to a much larger state-of-the-art facility in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which is a more business-oriented place. And therefore, we're going to be upping production dramatically. Excellent. So Sun and Fun 2012, only a couple of months from now. Only a couple of months. You haven't got much time. No are you going to be no. ready? Oh, yeah. We're ready. We have the aircraft you just got to get it down there all right great so we'll be looking for that airplane we'll do more on that you'll see some flying footage of this airplane with the longer wings and the upturned wingtips yep. and some of the other stuff too look for it at sun and fun 2012 thanks for talking with us today pleasure. for more information today about what's coming and in the future go to cmaxamerica.com and do you have any information on this airplane yet I have uh, flight information on the original model that uh, I flew before. We'll have to wait to get the new one. That information is available along with news and other resources at bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. This and many other videos will be available on aircraftreporters.tv.